You know, after installing an operating system, whether it be Windows, Mac, or Linux, there's always this painstaking process that you have to go through. Getting all your programs installed, getting all your icons where you want them to go, uh, moving your data where you want it so that your programs can find it, setting up any themes that you have installed, installing any drivers that you need. And so it takes a long time. It's a painstaking process. And so if something were to happen to this system, I would like to be able to have a clone of it so that I could just restore it from the clone and then I would have everything set up exactly the way that I see right now. So here is my main computer. This is where I do most of my work. I do my video editing, I check my email, uh, I do photo editing and whatnot. And this is where I spend most of my computer time. So I've got it set up exactly the way that I like it. I have all my programs installed and it's working exactly the way that I want it to be. It's, it's perfect for me. So what I want to do is make an exact copy, a mirror, a clone of this computer so that if anything happened to it, I could just go to the clone and then restore it and then I'm back to what I see right here. Now it doesn't matter if you're running Windows, Mac, or Linux. This program will work for all three of those operating systems. Now of course I'm running my Linux machine here. But it doesn't matter because we're going to actually be moving out of the graphical interface of operating system and we're going to be booting from a flash drive. And I'll show you how to create that flash drive as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mess this system up. We're going to delete a whole bunch of critical operating system files and whatnot, delete the data, everything that we can. We're going to totally hose it down and, 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 and wipe it to try to completely mess it up as much as we can. And then we're going to do a restore so I can show you exactly how this program works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to a website called Clonezilla. It's C-L-O-N-E-Z-I-L-L-A dot O-R-G. No, we got an ad there. Uh, now you'll see it says, Clonezilla is a partition and disk imaging cloning program. It helps you to do system deployment, bare metal backup, and recovery. Now there are three types of Clonezilla. There's Clonezilla Live, Clonezilla Light Server, and Clonezilla SE, we're going to download the Clonezilla Live. And it'll take you to here. Uh, now when you're here, you notice there's different ways to install. It says for CD, DVD, for USB flash drive or USB hard drive. Now, I am going to put it on a flash drive, but I'm still going to download this one here where it says download an ISO. So I'm going to click on this, and then it takes me to here. I'm going to click on the stable version right here. And then I'm going to pick my CPU architecture, AMD64, and I'm not going to download it as a zip. I'm going to download it as an ISO. And then I click on the down, little download button right here. And then after a few seconds, it'll pop up asking me where to download it. Okay, so now on a Linux machine, it's very simple to create a bootable flash drive. All I have to do is put a flash drive into a USB port, make sure it's you know big enough, at least eight gig or so. Uh, and then I right click on this, and you'll notice here where it says make bootable USB stick. All I have to do is click on that, and I have to select, because it, you know, it knows the ISO image, and then I just have to select the USB stick, which is right here. It recognizes my 32 gig, and then I just hit right, and it asks for the password. So it'll make, a bootable USB stick. Now if you're on a Windows machine you have to do another step. You have to install another piece of software and when you install this software I recommend a piece of software called UNet Bootin. So let's go out there while this is creating this bootable stick. So if you go out to just just search for UNet Bootin, U-N-E-T-B-O-O-T-I-N -E and it's going to bring you to the SourceForge page. Right so if you go down here uh, here are the releases right here. So you just download this software here and install that. And then basically it's going to be acting the same as this right here. Uh, it's going to, let me show you, uh, it'll give you this here where it says, you know, pick your ISO image. You'll have to select your ISO image and then select the flash drive and then go ahead and write it and then it'll create a bootable USB drive. Now, You'll have to restart your computer with your flash drive in it. Uh, and then what you're going to have to do is tell your machine to boot from that USB. Now, here's the deal. Every machine is different. When my computer is booting up, 
I hit F12. F12 gives me a menu right here. You see, uh, it asks, uh, you want to boot from the internal hard drive, which I don't because that's where my operating system is. USB storage device. This is what I want to boot from, my USB storage device. Now, you're going to have to find out what keys you're going to have to hit to bring up your boot menu. So uh, just look up your computer on the internet, your model and whatnot, and then find out what you have to do to bring up your boot menu. Uh, now your boot menu is before your operating system, so make sure when you reboot your computer, you're, you're fast on the keys to be able to hit your F12 or F1 minus F12. Your F12, F1, your uh, F2, every one of them is different. So you'll just have to find out which key you have to hit to bring up your boot menu. Now I'm going to select my USB storage device because that's where my Clonezilla is located and my machine will boot from that flash drive. Okay, so it brings up this menu here to start with. Uh, Clonezilla Live, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And then it brings up this one here, select language. I'm just going to hit enter for English. Uh, enter to keep the default keyboard layout. And then enter to start Clonezilla. And enter, I'm going to work with disk and partitions. Uh, enter by this, it says use local device, enter. And then down the bottom left you'll see it says uh, press enter to continue. Uh, control C to exit this window. It just scanned all of my disk. So Control plus C. And then it brings up this one here. Now this is, it's asking me where to save the image. So I'm going to scroll down here to my 8 terabyte drive, SDC1. This is not the drive that I want to back up, but where I want to save it. So I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, skip the check checking and repairing. Um, now it brings me up to the directory structure here. Uh, I'm going to arrow, here you have to tab over, so I'm going to tab over uh, to the done because I just want to put it in the root directory. So tab till I hit the done and then hit enter. Then down the bottom left it says hit enter again. And then enter, beginner mode. And I'm going to save the disk, so save local disk as an image, hit enter. And then it's going to ask me for the name. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. Just leave it as a default. And then now this is where it's asking for the source. The NVMe is what I want to back up. So to select that, I just hit the space bar and it'll put an asterisk there next to it. Hit enter. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, the second one here, SZ9. Hit enter. Uh, skip. Checking, enter, uh, yes, check the saved image, enter, tab over to OK, uh, don't encrypt it, I'm going to hit not to encrypt, hit enter, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow down to reboot, and hit enter, it'll just reboot the machine when it's done, and then down the bottom left it says press enter to continue. and then hit, it says are you sure you want to continue? Press the Y button and then enter. Then it'll start going through its motions. Now you'll see that it'll kind of flash off to different screens and whatnot, but that's just what it's doing here. It's backing up different partitions. There was I think one partition there. Then it'll go through all of the uh, processes here. And I'll go ahead and actually fast forward all this. Fast forward, fast forward. And here when it's all done, it took about 17 minutes and now it's going to reboot. It says, will reboot, 7654321, done. Okay, so here we have booted right back into my Linux desktop. So let's take a look um, at the folder that it, it uh, created. It's right here on my storage drive. And it is seven, 27 items, 16.8 gigabytes. So that's compressed. So let's take a look at the actual drive here. This is my 500 gig right here. 
and it is actually 45 gig. So it took 45 gigabytes and compressed it into 16.8 right here. So it's sitting on my secondary drive in my computer. So now let's go ahead and let's just completely mess this system up and then let's do a restore. Uh-oh, everything's gone. We are dead in the water. Okay, so let's take the uh, flash drive with the Clonezilla on it, put it back in the computer, and boot from it again, and let's go through the restore. Okay, so here we are back at Clonezilla. We have the main menu here. We're just going to hit Enter for Clonezilla Live. And we're going to hit Enter for English. Uh, Enter to keep the default keyboard. Uh, start Clonezilla, enter. Uh, work with disk partitions, hit enter. Uh, use local device, enter. Uh, down on the left it says hit enter to continue. Uh, control C to exit this window. And we are going to select the drive that the image is on and we're going to hit skip skip checking hit enter and we're going to tab over to done because it's in the root directory of this disk uh, down on the left it says press enter to continue uh, beginner mode hit enter now here's where we where everything is different. We're going to go down to restore disk. Restore an image to local disk. And then we're going to hit enter. And then we're going to pick the last image that we did, 828 2024, but it's image number 22. I think that's part of the time. And we're going to hit enter. And this is where it's going to go back to. It's going to overwrite the NVMe drive. We hit enter. Use the partition. Yes, check the image. And then when it's all done, we're going to go down to reboot and press enter to continue. And there we go. Now this part here, what it's doing, it's checking the image first. So it's going to take a little bit of time here checking the images. After it checks the image, then it's going to prompt you. Uh, it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And here we are. Are you sure you want to continue? We hit the Y and enter. And you'll have to do it a couple times for each partition, I believe. Y, enter. It says, OK, let's do it. And 7654321. And 20 minutes later, we are right back where we started from. As if nothing ever happened.